any graph that I don't like, I can switch, skip it, and pick another one. I can pick any graph I want up there. So I don't have to leave it up to uh, the artist to pick the graph. I can pick any graph I want. It would just slow it down. But if I see a graph that I think looks miniaturized or I don't like, I'll just skip it. I'll say, I don't want that graph in my bunch. And when you skip it, uh, it's, I just skipped that one because I, that one to me looked mini miniaturized to my eye. I don't want it. So you have to watch all these things. Um, Patrick asked me a question about the miniaturized hair that I, we can see some of the hair in the back is miniaturized. All hair is not created equal. So the miniaturized hair, I don't want to get. I'll skip over that if the robot even wants to punch it. The miniaturized hair in the back will grow back. It'll grow back, you know, thinner girth than the bigger hair that we're punching, but I'd rather leave it in the back than move it to the front. The enemy of FUE, whether it's by the artist or by hand or by anything, is transection. Transection just means graft injury, usually a cutting injury or a shear injury that injures the graft. So we're always avoiding and to prevent transection. And the way that we check, after we punch a grid, we check the graphs. When we punch the first grid, we always check at least 10 graphs to see what it looks like. We've already checked that. There's no injury. And we can tell, once you get a lot of experience, you can look on the screen. If the graphs are elevating well and the angles look good, you know you're not transecting, just like you do when you're doing manual FUE. So transection is something that everyone must be mindful of. You want to be mindful of it for two reasons. One, you don't want to plant used transected grass because we don't know if they're going to grow. Uh, number two, you know, you're removing hair from the back and you can't use it from the front. So what does that mean? That means that you're actually lessening the amount of hair that your patient has because you're punching it out, you're beating it up, and you can't use it up front. So when they leave your office, they have less hair indeed than they did when they came in. So we don't want that. We're doing our third grid, everything's going well. The great thing about the artist system is it's fully automated. And what do we mean by automated? Automation is a term that means that machinery is used in the place of human labor. Now that doesn't mean that like a lot of people think that you just turn this on and go away and everything is good. We're still monitoring what the robot's doing, controlling angles, depths, uh, controlling how shallow, how deep, spacing, picking out the hair groupings we want. So there's a lot of doctor interaction that mess, must go on to make this a successful procedure. Um, the term automation, as everyone learned probably in sixth grade, comes from Henry Ford, who back in you know, the early you know, uh, 1910, 12, 30, 40, basically replaced human labor with machines. So automation is a key word to understand. Um, it doesn't mean that the human element goes away. It just means that a lot of the human element is taken away by a machine, which hopefully is more accurate, uh, which the artist is. It's like a pitching machine where you go to, to throw pitches. The artist can throw, say, 3,000 strikes. How many strikes can you throw before your arm gets tired? So that's the benefit of automation.